What is happening y'all? Cowboy here and welcome back to another build showcase and not just one build but today we're taking a look at two builds, two separate melee builds, the Murakumo and the Murakumo Redshift. Now these builds are very similar, if you're looking at the parts right there. The main differences is we pull in some of the coral weapons, hence the Redshift change in the name, as well as some of the Institute parts. Uh, obviously a slightly different color scheme here, going from blue to red, uh, but two very similar builds with very similar playstyles. Let's dive in, talk about them, get into some matches, and show them on off. I've had a lot of people asking about melee builds, and they are a lot of fun to play. Now, obviously, you do need to have the OS tuning weapon bay to be able to pull this off, but with that being said, let's jump in. Now, to start with the original Murakumo, Let's talk about our frame pieces first, as these are identical between all the ACs. We have the HD 033M barrel. This is just my go-to head a lot of the time. It's very balanced, very solid all-rounder piece. Moving on from there, the IB co 3 c hull. Now, this comes from one of the final bosses. It's a pretty balanced piece, but the big advantage of this is the generator output adjustment and generator supply adjustment. This is going to help boost our generator, which will allow us to use generators that typically wouldn't work with an AC this heavy and get away with them, which is important for reasons we'll discuss later. Moving over to the arms, the AAJ-123 Basho. These come with a 158 melee specialization, which results in a 28%, 29% damage increase. Let me check. 29%. Yeah, you get 0.5% for each point here. So almost a 30% increase in your melee damage from these. Obviously, firearm specialization is pretty low, but we're not worried about that because we are a melee build. And then lastly, the 2C-3000 Wrecker. These boast a ton of stability, some of the most stability that you can get on a biped. And on top of that, they have this really cool kind of samurai-esque look. It reminds me of like the, the knee guards that samurais used to wear. And since this thing's called Murakumo and it's a melee build, I figured a samurai type motif would fit quite well. Now moving on from there, let's talk about the weapons and this is where things begin to differ. To start, we have the Werger laser shotgun. This is basically an upgrade to the regular laser shotgun in almost every area. It also has a fantastic charge attack that we can follow up after a melee stun that basically just punches a laser through somebody. So really solid weapon for this build. Doesn't have the stagger of the Zimmermans, but it definitely gets the job done, especially considering we're melee focused. Moving on from there to our main melee, the laser lance. This thing needs no introduction. It is an absolute menace. I love this. It's probably my favorite melee weapon. Moving on to the back unit, I'm rocking the dual missile launcher, but you do have a little bit of allowance here. You could run the grenade cannon, you could run the plasmas, the vert plasmas, the regular plasmas, uh, these verts, the standard six cell, whatever you really want. I just really like the dual missile because we have a 0.4 second lock, which is super nice because I'm constantly in the fray and I don't have a lot of time to, to try and keep that lock. I want to be able to fire and forget and then jump on top of them with melee. Moving on to our left back unit, we have the Pulse Blade. Now, while the Pulse Blade is rather basic, it's actually a really nice follow-up to the Laser Lance. This thing has a ton of reach and some of the better tracking out of the various melee weapons in the game, making it a solid go-to choice even though it is a beginner part. Moving on from there to the inner components, we have the ABJ-137 Kakaku. The main reason for this being that it has a ton of melee attack thrust. This is going to be what allows us to really get on top of targets when we are using our lance as well as our pulse blade. It's going to give us a huge boost that really allows us to make those connections with attacks. Moving on from there for the FCS, the IA CO1F Ocelus. If you don't have this unlocked, alternatively, you could run the FC006 Abbott, as the Ocelus is quite late. Uh, you can see very minor differences there, but if you have it, the Ocelus obviously gives us that 90 close range assist, which is great. And then lastly, for the generator, the VE20B. This has a 150 energy firearm specialization, which similar to the gloves, results in a 25% damage increase for energy-based weapons. In particular, when I say weapons, I'm not talking about missiles or melee, but weapons, as in our gun. So, 25% more damage to our laser shotgun. And while typically we wouldn't be able to work this in, because we have the HAL-826 and the very substantial generator adjustments it provides, you can see we are just barely scraping by at our energy load requirements. Of course, assault armor, because we are melee and in the fray. Now, hopping over to the redshift, obviously some late game parts on this one, but let's take a look. To start, we are rocking with the Zimmerman. The Zimmerman is honestly one of the strongest weapons in the game right now. This thing is overtuned. It's probably getting nerfed, but until that happens, 
Let's run it, baby. Huge attack power, huge impact, great for getting close range and building up impact on the target. Moving on to our first melee weapon, the Coral Oscillator. Now, the main reason we're going to use this is the stun attack. The regular melee attack is actually kind of lackluster, in my opinion, but the charge attack is a massive sweep with a whopping 288 meter range. This thing is a absolute beast in 3v3. It'll frequently stagger ACs in one hit, or if they're already staggered, it's going to do like 6,000 damage to them. So it's definitely a beast out on the battlefield. Moving on to our shoulder units. Of course, I'm rocking the dual missile launcher again, but go with what you would like. And then for our other melee unit, we are rocking the ML Redshift. This is essentially a red version of the Moonlight that improves everything with the exception of the charge attack aspects. And this is just basically because I wanted to go Redshift. I wanted to have a red theme and a blue theme, and I think I've done a good job at that. Now, hopping over to the inner components. As I mentioned, frame is all the same. With the inner, we can move over to the IACO1B gills. Because we have range on the redshift and we have a charge attack on the coral, we don't actually need to have any melee attack thrust. It's just not going to help us out here. So because of that, we are picking up the IACO1B, mainly because if you look at our quick boost reload time, nothing is getting remotely close to a 0.33 second. This is a really fast quick boost, which is great for a melee oriented build. Still rocking the Ocelus, and then the generator, the IAC01G Aorta. Now, typically, these generators tend to be kind of hit or miss. Uh, we could go for the bigger one, but you can see that the quick boost reload time also goes up, and, uh, you know, I want that, that fast, fast quick boost. But to be honest, these are kind of tricky to use, but if you are using the HAL chest, that definitely helps to offset them. If you want to use this one, you certainly can. Uh, the big difference, if you look here, our energy load is going to go way up, so you could certainly put something bigger and beefier on your shoulders with this, but we're going to lose some recovery, we're going to lose boost speed, we're going to lose quick boost speed, we're going to lose quick boost reload time, and those are all areas that I don't particularly want to suffer with a melee, but if you want to go heavier, I would suggest it. And the main reason, obviously, being this is going to turn our flames red, which with a name like Redshift, you kind of need to have that. Lastly, before we jump in, a lot of people have been asking for the paint jobs, so I'm going to be showing those off moving forward. In this particular case, uh, all of the subcomponents have level or max out reflectiveness and luster, while the main just has the reflectiveness. Hopping over to, oh no, hopping over to regular Murakumo. Same thing with the paint. Let's see, we have the, oh, I guess you still have the shine on you. Oh, never mind. There we go. 1.0 reflectiveness and then the uh, 1.0 on both for the subcomponents. You can see just basically uh, just a tinge of red and a tinge of blue. Really like how that looks. Uh, but let's hop into some nests, get some matches going. We're gonna start with some singles. Hopefully I can get a match in with each. Who makes a nine person singles lobby? This man is a maniac. Imagine joining a singles lobby and waiting that long to be able to have a turn couldn't be me either way uh, because we are showcasing two builds definitely moving rather fast this video gonna try and do a one-on-one -on -one with each build and then gonna try and jump in and do a uh, 3v3 with each build but since this dude isn't readying up we are actually going to just find a different room I've noticed a lot of that lately. I, I will join lobbies and the person just sits there. They sit there, they don't ready up, and it's like, what are you what are you doing? Why? Why do you even have a lobby open right now? Just leave. This guy, hopefully he's ready soon. Until he's tweaking his AC, but I'll I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and, and wait a minute. Let's see. Can I uh show chat? Nice to meet you. I want a sortie. Oh, it was very nice. Honestly, the worst offenders, though, are the 3v3 people. You join a 3v3 lobby, and you have, like, the one dude that's spending, like, five minutes just building a whole ass AC. Like, my guy, get out of the lobby. Leave. You, you can do this elsewhere. You do not need to make every single person wait three whole ass... Like, the match would have been over if you had just left, built your shit, and come back. So we got... Looks like Dual Songbirds Gatling. And I think that's the laser blade. I'm not entirely sure, though. Murakumo. Very edgy.
So you can follow up out of a laser stun with either your pulse blade or alternatively with your laser. That's a very poor opportunity. Should have definitely gone for the other one there. I really like just the just the hint of blue. It's almost hard to see in the sun. It's like you think they're all black like a ninja. Then the sun glints off of it and you can see the blue. See that quick shotgun charge there, very, very deadly. And it comes out incredibly fast. It's just like, boom, it's a laser punching straight through. And obviously it has that 30% damage boost coming in uh, from the, the modifier on our generator. Very, very fun build. Now, if he is gonna mix things up, I will also pull out, pull out Redshift do another match with that well I guess the first match with that and then we're gonna hop on into a threes lobby now given this definitely works better in 1v1 um, in particular I think the standard Murakumo will work better in solos while the redshift works better in multiplayer because the coral oscillator can hit multiple people and it's just like a giant AoE but both builds can work in both circumstances it's just the Lance is super aggro in 1v1s it'll interrupt a lot of startup attacks, it'll interrupt a lot of animations, and it just gets you right up on the face of an enemy. Usually leading into a stagger, which you then follow up with the charge shoddy punch or the pulse blade or whatever you want. Is he running? Is that? Oh my god. I was glancing at my monitor because someone messaged me on Discord. I think I saw double gats. Murakumo, red shift, erasing your shield. Not to beat my edge. I love the commitment with this build because there's better generators I could run, but it's like, I mean, I'm called Redshift. I can't, I can't not have the the super red generator. You are within my blade's range. It's honestly a fit. Oh! The erasure! Mid-deployment of the pulse armor. Like, this This is the anime mech. This is the, uh, the Omai wo shichinderu. <laughs> you don't realize, but you've already lost. What? Nani? Blam! A missile boat. A... Disgusting mess and a meta gat man. Also, uh, missiles and flamethrowers, machine guns, and then my edgelord ass. We'll see how this goes. As long as I can get on top of the missile boat, I think we we actually stand a chance. And this is actually a, a decent level to counter missile boats. Worked 
worked out quite well. big things you got to be aware of with this is when you use it you can't actually really see if the target moves around but considering we're up against a missile bird in multiplayer. But this is actually like a really, really good level for us here. I think Flamethrower Man is also applying like perpetual pressure. There you are. Yeah, time to come out of the sky. Team is running protection right now. Oh, I had a feeling I was going to go down any second there. Oh no, I'm not dead. I gotta move. One of those moments where you just assume you're dead, so you... You're like, oh, hold on. Him though. They can finish him. No! Oh my god, look at his health. Look at his health. He had like one sliver of health left. But still, that was uh that was a pretty clean win. And I put in some work, so I'll take it. So it took a little bit of time for the second match to get going. We had a bunch of people bail, and then they changed the level, and then people were like joining and leaving, but so hopefully. This isn't too much of a pain in the ass to 
edit that out. My Adobe is usually a hot mess, so we'll see what happens. If I can get Adobe to consistently work, I could record these and just like kill out all the, the loading time and fit more PvP in, which would be ideal. So I guess this will be a good test. Completely fucking whiffed. Oh, <laughs> just charged right into the assault armor. I figured he was going for a shield, so I went for it. Getting some good hits in though. Giga drill breaker. Oh, I. Oh. Oh. Okay. That didn't hurt as much as it could have. Goddamn needles. Those are definitely getting nerfed, by the way. There ain't no way the needles get left alone as hard as they hit. I mean, they're fun, but like, ooh. Is that a double melee kill? It's my first ever double kill in melee. I'll probably never get one again, but not only did I get it, but it's recorded. Amazing. I'm gonna, after this real fast, I'm gonna talk about the, uh, the melee cancel as well, because I think that's some important tech to know if you're gonna run a build like this. Oh! 
in with the last, the last two seconds. Another finisher. And that is going to be a fat score coming in for me. 901 with the melee build in 3v3s. Beautiful. So before we wrap up, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the melee dash cancel you saw me doing in the last fight. The idea is as long as you haven't actually attacked with the blade yet and you're still uh, basically in the movement, the motion, you can cancel it out with a quick boost. And that allows you to do things like this. And now it's going to use up a lot of energy, but obviously in the last match you saw what was great is I'd start up the melee, somebody would quick boost, I would quick boost back on top of them, reinitiate the melee, and you end up getting a lot more consistent hits with it. You can do this with just about anything, but you can see it's not, it's the, the what's nice about the pulse blade is the pulse blade has that forward momentum. Trying to do it with the lance, like it works, but the lance isn't really giving you forward momentum. So either way, that is going to wrap things up for this video. Hopefully y'all enjoyed taking a look at the Murakumo melee builds. Thanks for coming on by, and we'll catch y'all next time as we pull out the missile boat.